My name is Greta Wood. I'm the business reference librarian here at Mississippi State. And I am very excited to introduce to you Kim Dunker, who's going to be talking to us next. Um, she's a library media specialist from Florence High School in Florence, Mississippi. There's some extra handouts on the chair right there. And she's been a certified teacher and librarian for 20 years and has worked with students from pre-K to 12th grade. She was the recipient of the Verizon Foundation's $11,000 literacy grant and has literally just completed her master's in education in curriculum and instruction with an emphasis in technology, I think yesterday or? <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. Yay. Yay. Now I can be my computer. <laughs> She's most proud of changing her library from a traditional library into a digital research center central to her school. In four years, she has successfully implemented a plan to modernize the library and has dramatically increased online access to data over one school year. So without further ado, Kim Dunker. Well, thank y'all so much for having me. I'm so glad y'all came. Um, hopefully there's going to be some stuff here that you haven't seen. If there's not, that's okay, because you're going to tell me, well, I did like that, or I didn't like that. So I really want this to be really um, where we can kind of go back and forth and share with each other, and it be a non-threatening environment. And the reason why I wanted it to be a non-threatening environment is because two years ago, I didn't know what, what baptismal was. And when I tell you I didn't know what it was, Web 2.0 too. Come on. And so you would Google it and Facebook would come up. <laughs> well, that didn't help me at all. That's not what I wanted. I want the I want the package. I want the package. Where is the package? Who do I pay to get this? And I didn't want to put it. So we came to a group of us librarians, and I was afraid to ask anybody to be honest. Because you don't want to be the only one in there that says, what are they talking about? <laughs> Do you know what they're talking about? Are they speaking English? You, you don't want to be that one. But I was that one. So I thought, well, gracious, I, maybe I'm not the only one that's out there that's just sitting here this whole time going, I'm going to shut up. Sit in the back, and I'm just afraid nobody calls on me for anything. So I wanted to do a class where we could kind of have a conversation and look at some really fun websites that you could play with but not feel intimidated by that I use all the time. Okay. Now I do work in the high school library and I know most of y'all are academic, but trust me, kids are kids and you have never known a freshman orientation like a group of ninth graders being brought into the library for the first time and all they're worried about is who they're going out with. <laughs> That's it. So I do a lot of stuff to get their attention. I do a lot of stuff. I'm very active. I'm going to move a lot. I'm going to move around. But we're going to look at some of these. We're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with basically what Web 2.0 is. Now, I am not going to do justice to what I learned here when a group of us librarians came up for the Mega Resources Conference. Amanda was in that. She did the class, and she was kind of in there and she started talking to us and she started realizing that there was this whole section that didn't know what was going on and so she explained it very very well basically <coughs> and i promise you you really need to understand it you probably might want to talk to her because she's much better than i am basically at its heart it's a difference in how we're communicating with the computer it's no more just you putting your stuff there or somebody else putting your stuff there. It's us going back and forth, just like I want us to be here. So it's just more of an open forum. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite websites. I've already told you that. This is actually one that I love. Love, 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 love it. I don't know why I love it so much. I think it's the boxes. <laughs> they make me happy. I don't know why they make me happy, but they just do. I like the neatness and the cleanness. And what this is, is this social bookmarking. Now what this allows me to do, is it allows me to mark a lot of spots and give them to you. And don't worry about worrying about writing down one thing. I got you. Okay. 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 So what I'm
to bookmark this and put it on your web page and say, well, here are some really neat bookmarks for this. And I'm going to show you all one. And it doesn't have, this is a single page. I did this one just for us. It's not anywhere else, but I'm going to show you one of my other ones. This is about a year's worth of work. Look, there's some. What does it mean? 
and where can I get it? <laughs> and she's so sweet. She emails me back and she's like, okay. This is kind of what it means. We're going to show you a picture of, of what it looks like. So that is where you take, for example, a blog or a web page and you subscribe to it so that every time it's updated, it automatically updates your stuff. And you don't have to go back to that website in particular to check and see, did it up, did, is there something new? And so if you think about it, it's really great because it's going to save you time because you can actually, you can hook it up through a um, RSS reader or you can hook it up to your email where it's going to automatically come in and you're not having to go back and say, no, I really want to see that next article about how she, how this woman redid this chair, but has it updated yet? Well, I'll, let me go to see. I'm stopping on doing and go to see, and then you get over there, and of course, she hasn't. Mm -hmm. This way, it just comes straight to you. All right, we've already kind of talked about social bookmarking and Web 2.0, and um, like I said, web, social bookmarking is really kind of where I got my start. Um, I like social bookmarking. It makes me, like, like I said, the little boxes just make me so happy. And Simple is just one. Okay, let me ask this question. How many of you like grape jelly? Anybody? I know you think I don't, nothing goes with this, but I'm going somewhere with this. All right, how many of you like strawberry jelly? Okay, anybody like orange marmalade? Okay, all right. Now, I have to be honest. I don't like orange marmalade. I'm sorry. Does that mean she's she wrong for liking orange marmalade? Can I go over to her and go, you know, we need to have a discussion about this. This is orange marmalade and you just do not need, you know. No, we don't need to do that. Well, social bookmarking, for every one that you find, there are 40 more that do something a little bit different that you may like a little bit better. And that's the beauty of this, is that you can find, I'm going to show you my favorites. You may get on there and think, I'm almost crazy as all get out. I don't want to, I don't like this one. Fine. If you look around, especially if you Google it, you're going to find something else that does the exact same thing or something similar to it that you might like better and you might not feel like you didn't, it wasn't comfortable to you. So you've got to find stuff that fits your own personality and your own stuff. You know, you've got to give it your own flair. So again, We've got some things marked here, and we're going to see these. I'm going to close this <coughs> just for a second. This is stupid again. And uh, most of y'all have heard about Google Docs. I'm probably not going to spend time. Anybody heard of Google Docs? That one you're very familiar with? Somebody told me yesterday, and y'all probably already know about this, that you can actually upload your own images and videos on Google Docs and link like a quiz to it and it will send you an email and all that and I'm just like sitting there going, I'm do I don't like you at all. <laughs> I actually she's a brand new teacher in our, our building and I was just like going, Oh no, 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 no. You're getting on my turf now. But I was nice and I said, Oh good, I'll have to come talk to you. <laughs> okay, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. Edmodo, anybody heard of that one? Okay, um I have a funny story about this. I have a funny story about everything. Everything's a funny story for me. Edmodo is basically a Facebook for teachers. And it's great for a classroom teacher in particular because what it does is it allows you to create a website where you can share information. But it's not just limited to you putting the stuff out there. The, the kids can put stuff back to you. So if they have a question about a class, they can put it on Edmodo and send it back. Now, it is a specific login. They have to have your access code to get it. And so you determine who has that access code. And you can have an Edmodo page for every class that was that, that you needed. So it's unlimited as far as that goes. Now, for us, we deal with parents a lot. And so you can actually set this up to where when you send out an update saying, you have a test Friday, make sure you have it done. Because we have to do these kind of things as a high school. We, that, that's kind of what we do. It sends it out as a text message across the phone line that they choose. 
which is great, right? Yeah. Would you like to hear my funny story? Mm -hmm. okay. So I set up the first Ed Meadow page in, in our school, the first one. And all of us had been to this workshop and we had all heard about it, so I thought, this is great. I can go ahead and I can train the kids on Ed Meadow and I can send them to the classrooms and then when the teacher set theirs up, they'll already be ready. <laughs> And I started this with my lovely ninth graders. Every now and then, I'm just dumb as a fence post, and that was not one of my brighter moments. So we get in there, and they're just like going, man, this is cool, this is Facebook, I know how to do this, and they're just ripping and shredding. Well, we have a policy in our school of we can't have cell phones on in the classroom. If they do, they lose them for the year, the year. Not a week, not a month, the year. Bless his heart, one of my library workers had volunteered to be on my Edmodo page so we could test out how you join so I could get the directions and all that. And so these little ninth graders get on there and they all decide that they need to type something very important to tell them. Very, very important. So I have about 30, 35 ninth graders all typing, hello. And they all went to his phone and blew his phone up. Not literally, but he got literally 35 text messages saying hello. In the middle of class. Thank goodness he was in the library at the time. And I was just like going, why is your phone going off? Turn it off. You know, and I was like going, oh, wait. So we did find out with one thing like this, that you've got to be careful. Sometimes what I think is going to be implemented smoothly is not. And you kind of have to draw back a little bit and go, ooh. And like she was saying, give it just a little bit. That didn't work. But it does work really well when the teachers bring it in, and then I have my stuff there, and I can send it out to them. So that's just one. So we have a lot of our teachers are now on here. And it works well for them. They really like it. I have one teacher in particular that uses this quite a bit. Um, she's one of our special needs teachers. And she uses this for her class. And what she'll do is she uses a couple of other tools as well. And so if she needs supplies or something in particular for that student, she can just send it out through Edmodo and it goes straight to that parent. It doesn't go to the other parents, it just goes to that parent. Or she can send it out to the whole group. She also does reading assignments where the child reads out loud and she can actually, um, she, she's going to use Yodi and I'll show you in just a second, to have them read on the phone, which is not threatening to them. And then we're going to upload it as an audio file. And then she can send that out to the, t to the parents. And so they can actually hear their child reading in the classroom that day. And you can hear the differences as they're progressing. So you can take something that was done the first of the year and something at the end of the year and really measure accurate progress that way. So that's one thing that we can do. And I'm going to flip over to that and show you the video. And this is a sample Yodio to kind of show you how you can add audio to screenshots or to pictures that you could use within your classroom. This particular uh, picture that you're looking at right now is a screenshot of some widgets. This is another screenshot of some apps that I have installed on my computer. And front and center you will notice a nice pink heart that is from Sketch, a program that I really, really like a lot. This is a sample of Google Reader, which is an RSS reader. Social bookmarking is a handy way to share websites with people. This is my favorite, Symbolism. Now, you can upload that to your website. You can put, you know, you could actually, um, you can download that as a file. You can, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. And you can see how that would be really useful, especially in particular situations maybe where you, especially if somebody's very uncomfortable doing oral presentation, 
you can utilize that maybe scaffold that instruction and get them to be a little bit more comfortable doing more presentation. So that's and we use that quite a bit. Um, okay, and I'm gonna tell have y'all heard of that one? Okay. Well we'll look at it anyway. Um, if you have a Mac, you're going to go, and what's your point? But remember, when I started this, I didn't have a Mac, and I didn't know what I was doing. And so this, to me, was, like, amazing. So what you can do is you can create your own videos using your pictures. And you can upload pictures. Uh, you can upload all kinds of pictures. I mean, they need to be yours, obviously. But you can upload pictures, and then you can add music, and it adds lights, and you can add text. This that I did just a very quick one. You won't know these people, but that's my son who graduated this year. Sorry.
and you can also do different videos. One of our teachers actually um, rewrote a lady, I don't know why they did Lady Gaga, I absolutely love Lady Gaga, but nonetheless it was really freaky walking into a curriculum development meeting and hearing a Lady Gaga song on Common Core. That was slightly different. But that's Five Finders. Um, it has its place. It, you may like it a lot better than I did. I just didn't, it didn't flow for me. That's just one of those strawberry jelly, what I call it. All right, so we've looked at Scoop It. Google Docs we kind of brushed over. We did Line Finder, we did Edmodo. We didn't do Mind the Mode. This is a, um,
screenshot with your computer. Basically, it uploads it to it. And then I can make changes to it and I can annotate it. So I can change the color. <coughs> that balls up yesterday and I think you should be more careful. Why? What's wrong with how I was picking it up? Because you can seriously hurt yourself. It wasn't heavy so there's no reason to worry about hurting myself. That doesn't matter. You didn't know how heavy it was and if it had been heavy you could have pulled a muscle or you could have hurt a nerve. Well, I guess you are right. How can I find out more about lifting things correctly? You can start by bending at your knees, rather than your waist. Is that it? That is a huge part, but it is not everything. 
I can give. Now, go animate. It's sort of free. Kind of, sort of. If you download it one way, it's going to be free. But if you use it another way, it's going to cost you money. So kind of make sure you watch that and be aware that it can cost you money. But it's going to be like anything else. It's going to ask you for your credit card information and all that. So it's not like it's going to go ahead and charge you. And then you're just like, oh, and, oh my goodness, how much did I just pay for this? And it, the way that you do this is more like, um, I think it does points, kind of, and you can pre-buy points. Maybe the other one does that. I kind of get that confused. But it's also got a <coughs> straight URL that I can copy and paste, and I can send my kids to. Now, admit it. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I think that's more interesting than watching a PowerPoint about how to live correctly. That to me, he had to write that script. He can tell, he can tell them to change their voice inflections and all that. I'm gonna look at another one that does the same type thing. It does cost a little bit more. Um, let's see. So let's go animate. That's the proper living. And that's what we did. We'll get back to voice in a minute. Extra normal. Extra normal does the same thing as go animate. You're gonna see subtle differences. Um, again, the pricing structure is different. Um, it's going to give you basically one free. So if you want to use the free version, it's only going to give you basically enough for one. But this, and again, you Good morning. This is a web 2.02, which allows students and teachers to create their own cartoon. These can be used to stir interest and be used to teach vocabulary. Be aware that this tool does require money after your first free use. Again, that would be better to me than necessarily watching a PowerPoint or something because you could actually have some dialogue going back and forth. Okay, so that's extra normal. Any of y'all ever heard of that one? Okay, um, we did the audio. Go back and we're going to get Boyke. Okay, Boyke allows you to custom design your own avatar and have it right. You can write your text or um, you can call it in, I think. But this is one that I did for this one. And that's my avatar that I designed. And if you'll notice when I'm moving my mouse, I love this. I love to show my kids this because they completely flip out when I do this and watch the eyes and the head. <laughs> This is completely uploaded to PowerPoint. You can upload it to Animoto. You can upload it to any of your stuff. So they're gonna, you're gonna see a layering here where I take one tool and I put another tool on top of it and utilize them both, but maybe not necessarily the way that they thought that I would. We have a student that has used this. Um, she has, I forget what it's called, but she doesn't like to speak in public at all. I mean, she will not talk public at all, but she'll talk at home. And so she has to do oral presentations sometimes, and they have allowed her to use this to do her oral presentation. Hello, my name is Mrs. Gunder. Welcome to the Florence High School website. Please feel free to look around. If you need help with any of our online resources, please stop by the library or email me again, Gunder at rcsd.ms So that's, again, you can embed that into your, your web page. Just kind of have a nice little welcome there. Or you can have them telling specific things like, okay, now click this button here. Because I have some databases that you can't just press enter and get what you need. You've got to press a specific button and a specific path and you can have all that on there. Y'all ever use Photoplexes? This is a website that you can use. You don't even have to log into it to use it. What it does is it allows you to upload a picture and then you can edit it somewhat. And so you can change it 
by adding blurs and wipes and cropping and shifting and resizing and all that. But the beauty of it is you save it back to your hard drive as a JPEG and it's still your picture. And you can log in and save it if you want to, but you don't have to. And again, what's our favorite word of the day? Free. We like free. It's free. And again, you can upload, upload it to your other pages. Um, let's see. Things move fast on the web, and it's hard to keep up with your favorite sites by visiting them separately. Thankfully, Google Reader can help. Google Reader lets you subscribe to websites, so new content comes to you when it's posted. Here's how it works. Subscribe to feeds from your favorite sites. Feed. Now, I will admit, my teachers are better at sidebar than I am, but I did tell them about it. So I get, I get points, even though I can't work it quite as well as they can. 
they, they act, we actually used side by um, two days ago in one of our workshops, and they actually had gotten and done a, a virtual um, scavenger hunt, and they had the questions next to each website that they wanted the teachers to answer and everything. So I thought that was really neat that I had just said, well, here's the website, and I, I don't know, I, I can't deal with it right now. You know, I had the worlds that week. I'm sorry. It was a summer. But kind of handy. Like I said, you kind of like the idea, right? I mean, I like the sound of the idea. I just can't, well, I haven't been able to just sit down and work at it. And I had one teacher tell me, well, you are. We're going to be fixing it. Um, museum is another one that we looked at. We use this just kind of. Today's front pages. So there are some front pages. You can actually search and pick out like from your own area and see the front page of the newspaper. It's not going to show you everything, but you can get the front page. So, and that's kind of neat. This it does other stuff as well, but this is what I mainly use it for because a lot of our kids may need to do something that way, just to have something quick. I'm gonna finish these up. I wasn't, I didn't even, I didn't know if I was gonna get to everything or if I wasn't. Uh, Google Reader, this is what Google Reader is gonna look like. This is an RSS feed reader, and it's gonna pull stuff in so that I can just go to one spot again and everything's there. Tagzito, anybody ever seen that? Okay, do y'all like word, wordables and that kind of stuff? All right, this one allows you to save it. Again, it's free. And if we just want to look at one real quick, the more times you type something, the bigger and bolder the print gets. And you can go in and you can custom upload your own document. No, we're not doing any updates. I have intentionally not updated my computer. I know that sounds horrible, but I promise you, my master's was on the line. I wasn't touching anything. All right. Um, let's see. Google Sites. Do y'all do y'all have ever want to create your own website? Okay. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to learn all that stuff. Google Sites does it, it helps you through it. If you're a big programmer and you know how to do Dreamweaver and all that stuff, you're gonna hate it. But for those of us that don't, it's really good. All right, uh, go to web will tell you like the hot things that are out there. What are the kids looking at? So you can go in and you can look at them and you can kind of play with them so that you have the same vocabulary that they do. And that's what this is all about sometimes is having the same vocabulary. And I know I rushed through that quite a bit. We do have a handout. Believe. Yeah, they got that. <coughs> and it's got the Symbolu page, it's got the stupid page, and all of these are marked there for you so that you can get it there, <coughs> you can do it around. Hopefully, what I would ask from you is if you find one. Find one that you like. And and play with it. And let me know. Let me know. You know what? You are crazy. I hated that thing. <coughs> you know, or this one's really cool. I really like this, so please let me know which ones you like and which ones you didn't. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you got some enjoyment out of some of those crazy ones. We've got about um, 10 minutes until we do break for lunch. If you've got questions, we've got time for that, or, or if not, I guess get to the restrooms before the rest of the conference. Right, right. <laughs> yes. um, but that was good. There were some things I had not heard of yet, so thank you very much. Oh, good. I'm glad. I was really afraid once I got up here that y'all had heard of every one of these, and I was just like going, oh, what's going to happen if they've all heard of all of them? I was going to die. So. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the Google Reader, mm -hmm. there's something that came up recently, Google Alert. Is that, are you, have you heard of that? I have not. I, I, I'll be honest. I have pretty much had blinders on uh, for the last... Yeah. Um, yeah, 
because I work full time and I have two kids and I'm working on my master's full time. So that kind of, you kind of get. And so that's the beauty of, of having the stuff come to you, but sometimes I miss things too because I just can't. Again, that convenience factor does come in and I just can't deal with it. So I apologize, I don't. Well, Fran said something, it's, you know, it's kind of like a feed. It, you have keywords you're looking for oh, and it'll neat. bring stuff to you. So that's neat. Yeah. I like that. What's it called? Google, Google oh, Alert. Alert. Would y'all like to see? Kind of, let's see if we can find it. Google Alert, she said. Alert, A L E R T. Okay, so this is our symbol loop page. We've got enough time to do this. Notice I clicked on the child and saying I can create my own child um, here. And we're going to.
high school where it's using us. So this is helpful for me because we have all ages. We have people coming back to school for training. We have high schoolers. So on the um, app list that I gave y'all, I did do college students, but there's also apps for toddlers. I had a, a, a teacher that has a two-year-old, so she wanted apps for toddlers, so I found a bunch of free ones. Again, the word of the day is free. Anything that you're going to see from me is, oh my goodness, I almost forgot to show them. Do we have time to do this by recorder? We've got about three, four minutes. Okay. All right. There are two ladies out of Texas called the Tech Chicks. They have a blog. <laughs> And they send out stuff, and so they sent out a blurb on Facebook that was talking about this app, and it's called Display Recorder. And what it does is you can go through your iPad and actually video and take audio of what you're doing on your iPad and then upload it to YouTube. And that was during my blackout season, but I still managed to get one done correctly. And this is This app does cost, it's a whopping $1.99. I don't know if we can afford this, but it's worth it. Hello, my name is Mrs. Hunter, and today we're actually testing out this particular app, which is called Display Report. In order to do that, we're going to go and look at how to utilize Dropbox, another app. The first principle of Dropbox.
Tour God and lead us all to food. <laughs> um, but thank you very much, Kim. That was great.